Proper Atmos clock fork position. This is critical to achieving high amplitude. I was recently contacted by someone overhauling their clock and they can only get 360 degree amplitude. So this is how you get high amplitude. First, the interior of your fork must be polished. The impulse roller must be polished free of debris and be able to rotate. You should be able to take that impulse roller and spin it with a Q-tip. This clock has about 500 degree amplitude. Notice how far that impulse roller is rotating to the left. What we're going to look at is the placement of the fork. Look at the diagram on the right. Do you see how the end of the fork only crosses the center of the impulse roller by about a half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter? That's critical. If that fork is pushed in too far, the impulse roller is going to drag across the interior of the fork. When you create drag, you create friction. The, this roller is only being pushed by the force of, uh, that's equal to a paint bristle hair pushing that fork. It's delicate. It should just tap that roller, gently push it, and release it. No dragging on the interior of the fork. So placement is critical. That fork must encounter the roller within the top third of that roller, and it must um, be the correct opening, the correct size opening. Here we have clearances. Quarter of a millimeter opening is the most you want this, the interior of your um, fork. Look how we're just tapping it. Nothing is dragging on the interior of the fork. The impulse roller is just gently being pushed. And this pushing only happens for less than a second. Okay, we're going to watch. Here comes our roller one more time. It's going to gently grab the right tap the right side that pushes the fork to the left and the left and the fork is now pushing the roller just for a second. We're going to watch what happens on the bottom side here in just a moment. Okay, notice how we have, you can see what's happening on the bottom side of the fork. We have the pallet stones and the escapement. Now the escapement's caught it's pushing right now. It just got caught again. Okay, so right now it's caught on the left side of the pallet stone. What's happening now is above the impulse roller is rotating left and it's gonna start coming back around. Of course, that force is happening by the force of the main spring. As it comes around, we're going to impact, we're going to, cut, we're going to catch that fork Right there, now we're pushing the fork, we're releasing the impulse roller and we're catching the escapement one more time. It's getting set up again. Let's watch that happen again. So above what's happening is the impulse roller is rolling around. The main spring is creating force to bring that impulse roller back. And we have energy that's being controlled and released. The energy is um, being muffled by the escapement. Pushing, right now we're pushing releasing. The pushing only happens for less than one second. As you're pushing that impulse roller, you cannot be dragging that roller across the fork. That's what happens when the fork is pushed too far back. If the fork is too far away from the impulse roller, it doesn't give it enough energy. The energy has to be delivered at just the right amount of duration and at the right position of the impulse roller. That's why fork placement is critical. So for this dance to happen between the escapement, the pallet fork, the impulse roller, one of the most important steps is the fork has to be properly poised. If the fork isn't properly poised, it's off balance. It will not shift to the left or to the right. It will become heavy on one side and that will actually prevent the fork from moving. Okay, this is going to be a top view. I just want you to watch how the impulse roller does. There, it gets captured, it gets just nudged, and it's allowed to escape. 
really important, no dragging. You want to capture that impulse roller. It needs to set the fork up for its next movement, and then it has to get pushed. Now, what's critical is the opening of the fork because that delivery of the energy from the pallet stone is only for a brief less than one second. So if that fork opening is too large, you're making that fork jump too far before it sends energy to the impulse roller. You have to have a perfect balance of the impulse or the fork opening being large enough to let that impulse roller escape without drag, but tight enough where you are jumping just a small distance before you deliver energy to the roller. Look, see that? Even that little jump I think could be improved. I can close that opening just a little bit more and deliver a longer duration of energy from the fork to the impulse roller. I hope that makes sense. Let's watch this again. Here it comes, little jump, perfect. See that little tiny gap right there on the right side between the roller and the fork? I think I could probably close that just a little bit more and bring my amplitude up. It's at 510 degrees. I can probably get another 40 degrees of amplitude, but it's running perfectly fine right now. Let's watch this. We're gonna grab that fork, tap it, deliver energy, and push. And as that roller rolls out, it's not dragging. Perfect. This is a different clock. I have the dial off. I was in the process of overhauling it. And I think this is a good time to look at your fork placement in relation to the center of the clock. This is actually a, um, an old, much, much older clock. But notice the placement of the fork is perfectly centered on the balance tube. Notice how this fork is just a quarter millimeter away from that left banking pin. Now we can see how it's gonna grab the impulse roller. It's delivering power, it's releasing, it's not dragging. Again, the fork is perfectly placed. This is critical too. Um, you have to worry about three separate axes when you are positioning the fork. This, the top, you know, you gotta be on that one third of the uh, impulse roller where you engage your fork. And of course, your distance back. How far either forward or back are you from the center line of the impulse roller? You don't wanna be too far in. You don't wanna be too far back. You really gotta find that Goldilocks. This is a 55 year old clock and look how far we're throwing. I mean, I think this thing is around 540 degree amplitude. It's just, it's just really going great. So, all right, if you um, enjoyed this video, please consider joining the Facebook group. I also have an email that you can um, contact me and uh, ask any questions or maybe ask me to overhaul your clock. Uh, the Facebook group, I'm hoping it's going to grow and we get a lot of users, people who are interested in fixing their own clocks. They don't have to send it to someone to get fixed. We can do this ourselves. So join the group and, I'll, and I'm sure between myself and the other members, we'll get any questions that you have answered.